Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. My name is Kay Slater, and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. Every month, we pick a new theme to explore together through art making and play. In these workshops, you can watch along any time you have time to make, or listen, or just watch. We encourage young people, families, and creative people of all ages to join us every week on Saturdays at 11 a.m. as we release a new episode. These videos are for you. Whether you want to join us on Saturday when they become available or any time you want to make. We're so glad you're watching. Have you missed a week? Check out artstarts.com slash explores dash online or any of our videos on YouTube or Facebook to check out an episode you've missed. Okay, let's explore together. Before we begin making, let's review the three rules of explores. We've got rules in quotes here because they're less rules and more like guidelines or things that we like to have in mind before we start making together. First is respect. We practice respect for ourselves by checking in with ourselves every day before we start making. Maybe we didn't have a good night's sleep or we're feeling really good today. Whatever it is, we want to take the time to check in with ourselves. We also practice respect by doing the same thing for each other. And if we're not making alone, we're making with other grown-ups, or other youth, or friends, or classmates. We want to practice respect by asking them how they're feeling as well, so we can be mindful of each other while we make together. Another way we practice respect is with our tools. That can be about putting them away when we're all finished or using them safely. If somebody else is waiting for a turn to use a tool, we can use our words or our signs and share. We can respect each other by asking how long they'll need the tool so we can move on to something else, or if we need it now, we can let them know when we will be done and tell them we will pass them the tool when we're finished. We can also practice respect by acknowledging the land. So this space that you see here is my studio space. And I'm on the stolen or unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations as an uninvited guest on these lands. One of the ways I practice respect is by acknowledging where I'm coming from and to be respectful of the lands, waters, and to the indigenous people who are here and who have been here since time immemorial while I have access to these lands. You can practice respect by finding out the territories and lands where you are watching and making from today, and by being the best guest you can and respecting the host nations, the lands, and waterways where you live. The second rule is that nothing is for keeps. I encourage you, whenever possible, to take things from the recycling bin. You can take paper that's already been drawn on, or has writing on the back, or is ripped, and then you don't have to feel worried about ripping it up yourself, or crumpling it, or just trying something out. It doesn't have to be good or perfect the first time, because it's not for keeps. And when we're all finished, I encourage you to take it apart. That helps really make it so that it isn't for keeps. Because if you know you're gonna take it apart at the end, you don't have to make any finished thing. You can try all the things and ways of making. Our last rule is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or even to turn out bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful and creative ideas are good regardless of what happens after we try something. If you already know how something is going to turn out, if you've done it before, we can be open to trying something completely new and practice surprise. And if it doesn't turn out, that's okay. It's not for keeps. These are the three rules that we like to keep in mind when we explore together every week. Okay, let's get making together.
Hello everyone and welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater and I'm going to be exploring comics with you for another week. I'm really excited to be back. We've already explored a couple of different themes um, in, the, in the theme of comics and you can go and check out those previous episodes at any time on our Facebook page, on our YouTube channel, or on our website, artstarts.com slash explores dash online. This week, what I thought we would do is we would look at breaking the rules. And the way that I thought we could explore breaking the rules is we could look at some uh, comic traits. So some things that we regularly expect from comics and explore which rules or which kind of things that always seem to be present in comics are things that aren't actually required. We're going to examine stereotypes and things that are expected we're going to use our art starts rule, no expectations, and then we're going to break those rules. This week for exploring comics and breaking the rules, I've gathered some paper and like always, it doesn't have to be fresh and clean paper. It can have marks on it. It can have, uh, it can be ripped. It can be different colors, it can be folded, it could have um, printing on it. It doesn't have to be fresh and clean. And then the second thing that I've gathered is mark making tools. And a mark making tool is anything that marks up a page. So whether that is a pencil, a crayon, a marker, lipstick, pudding. <laughs> I do like saying pudding. It makes me laugh and that's important in art making, but it really could be anything. You could be drawing comics in the dirt. You could add some water to the dirt and you could draw with mud outside as long as you had, you know, permission and you were on, um, you were on, um, an area that you were allowed to do that. You had access to and permission to water. Um, but really, really anything. If you could find a pretty colored rock and some, um, and some pavement and see if it makes a mark. Again, as long as you've got permission to be drawing in that area, chalk, chalk either inside on a piece of paper or chalk outside. Really anything is a mark making tool. When we're working on paper though, you might wanna explore what's going to work with a piece of paper because something that's gonna work on some pavement might not work when, uh, when you translate it to paper, but you won't know until you explore. Okay, so I'm gonna move a couple of these things over. So we've got them in mind, but we've got a bit more room to draw and explore breaking the rules. Breaking the rules in art making is kind of, kind of an important thing to explore. And the reason is, is because once it's really important to know the rules before you break the rules. It's one thing to break the rules that everybody else knows and you don't know, because that's not intentional. You don't, you're not doing it with the full knowledge of the rules that you're breaking. And so you're not really doing anything very interesting. You're just kind of doing something. But if you know the rules and you've practiced the rules, then all of a sudden you know the places or you know the reason for rules. And this is of course just rules in art making. Rules in other places, you know, they have they have a purpose as well. And I'm not encouraging you to break the rules in anything other than this area, this exploring area, this safer area that we've made for ourselves to explore. So in art making, for example, if somebody told me you can only you you should always only draw using um, an HB pencil. And I might go, well, why? And so for a while, I might, I might listen to that rule and only draw an HB pencil until I understand why people say that. And maybe it's because, you know, it doesn't smudge as much. It's easy to erase. 
Um, it allows you a lot of freedom so that um, you can always see it pretty consistently. It's easy to sharp, to make sharper um, when you're using a sharpener for your pencils. It's really easy to find. All of those things might be reasons why that rule came about. But once you know why that rule is a rule, you can start going, well, maybe in this situation, I'm not gonna use an HB pencil. Maybe this week I'm going to use a, an F pencil, or maybe I'm gonna use a marker, and maybe I'm gonna use a really thick marker, or maybe I'm gonna use a colored marker. And then you can find out why people say you shouldn't use those other things. And you might find that it's really hard you might find that it's um, not very satisfying, or you might find that you're really good at using that tool that most people don't feel comfortable using. That's why we break the rules in art, but that's why it's super important to first learn the rules so we can examine them, explore them, question them before we try something else. For comics this week, what I thought is uh, I, would, I would look at a couple of things that people say you have to have for comics and we'd look to see if that's true. The first one that I thought we would explore is that comics have to tell a story. And so comics can tell a story, right? It's, it's if you had your different panels and if you uh, were if you watched um, the other week where we were exploring time and space, we talked about the importance of the space between panels um, or how big panels were. And they, they contributed to the story. They were part of telling a story. And just by looking at these four panels that we have, we think that it's going to read, especially if we're, in, um, if we're reading English, um, that it's going to go one, two, three, four. And that's part of the story as well, the sequence that people read because we read left to right and uh, top to bottom when we're reading in English. So all these rules are there to help us tell a story so it's not confusing. But what if we just used these panels as places to draw? And what if the comic was just us drawing in these different places to set up a scene or just as an expression of ourselves? Does that make it any less of a comic? So that's pretty small and I'm drawing in pencil and I know that it, that can be a little harder to see on my screen. So I'm gonna transfer, I'm gonna take two more pieces of paper. And you know what, I'm gonna layer them here cause I'm gonna use marker and sometimes marker goes through my paper and I want to respect my art making space. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a marker and I'm going to draw those same panels again. And so if you have read a comic before or you participated along with me before, we know that you can tell a story. We already know that that's something that's possible with comics. So can you draw in the four panels that we just created things that wouldn't tell a story? Let's, let's try it out. I'm gonna start drawing a bunch of things that I'm thinking of in these different panels. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw however I'm feeling this morning. And it's gonna be completely up to me what goes down on the page. You can now fill your four panels with whatever you're feeling. No rules, right? We're breaking the rules. There are no rules of what you can put in these four panels. Let's go.
okay. So there are some of the things that I felt like drawing this morning. And I could go back into those with color. And the more detail we add, the more elements um, that when someone is reading or looking at our comics, um, they might be able to pull out their own meaning or make associations uh, within those panels. But if we look at this right now, is there a story there? There might be, but it's not really easy to read. It's not really easy to tell because, and, I, and we already know because we're making together, because I already told you, I wasn't trying to make a story. I just wanted to draw whatever fit into those panels. And so it's kind of a story of this moment. It's a story of our making together. But is it a story that someone can really easily read? No. Is it a comic? Sure. Why not? It's in the four panels. We have to spend time with each one. There's no reason why we couldn't read them this one to this one to this one to this one. And as people look at all four of these things, they may bring their own meaning to it. So for example, if, uh, so pretend you are somebody else and you come across these different panels. This panel here, where I've got uh, vertical lines on part of the panel and then horizontal lines from the top and the bottom, and then more uh, vertical lines in the middle, and then more horizontal lines in the rest, filling up that whole space with a bunch of different lines. Somebody who might weave or sew or work with fabric might see these lines and recognize them as the texture in fabric. Or maybe somebody uh, really, really is familiar with a lot of flags and might recognize this pattern as being similar to a flag and might read this picture that looks that, that it looks like a flag. Maybe somebody recognizes this as a really, really close up of, of something. So I said like the texture of fabric, um, but maybe this, this looks like um, a button, a buttonhole or the side of, this is the, um, the waistband of a pair of pants, and this is a, a loop, a belt loop right there, or a zipper. So the more you look at this one thing, somebody might be able to make associations and read this panel as something that they recognize and might be able to start creating their own story. But when they go over here, oh, that might make them go, well, I might have, I might be able to read these individually, but I, I don't really see a connection between this left panel and this right panel that has a whole bunch of triangles that are big and small. This was totally, this is totally a comic. There's no reason why I couldn't take these as pages, put them in a comic book, right? If I wanted to do that, I'd staple the pages together, or if I had made one big paper and fold it, put a cover on it, and then bring this out and show it to somebody and who's gonna look through it? Each one of these panels could be something that's important to you, but do they tell a story? On their own, no, but maybe all together they tell a story of you, of pictures that meant something to you. And so does, does a comic have to tell a story? No, it might still tell a story even if we don't mean to, but do we have to draw with a story in mind when we're making comics? No way. And so that's one way that we can be breaking the rules when we're looking at making comics. Here's another one. You need a character. And so this is kind of in the same, uh, the same area as uh, tell, telling a story. You have to tell a story. Here, I'm gonna bring this down here. You need a character. Because how can you tell a story if you don't have a character? Well, we already proved that. And in this one, you know what? I'm going to keep going because I don't really have a character there. Bring this over here. So we proved that we could still do it in those, those panels. I'm going to move this over here.
And so we kind of proved that already over here, that we don't need a character. But if you look at the comic panels that I did on the right, I'm gonna pull that out again, there we go. You can kind of see a character here, right? I made a little face on a flower. And so you might actually think that that's a character. You know what, here, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just rip, because it's no fun for me making unless I'm gonna rip something. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna try and draw one more panel without a character to prove, or at least to see, because sometimes I might go out to try and break these rules and then prove that I can't break these rules. Maybe they are actually really important to comics. And that's the other thing about art making and practicing breaking rules. You, you find a rule that you wanna see if you can break and you may learn that, whoops, nope, that isn't a rule that you can break. You may have tried it and you may have succeeded in trying it, but then when you do it, you go, oh, that looks bad or I'm not able to actually do the thing that I set out to do if I go that far in breaking the rules. Um, and that's, that's an important part of exploring as well. Okay, I'm gonna draw one more here and see if this, uh, if it's true that I can break these two rules together, that I need a character um, and that comics have to tell a story. So one more time. There we go. I really didn't make any characters there. Just like before, we could look at this and we could maybe create our own narrative, read our own story for this. Maybe this looks like, I don't know, candies or elevator buttons, birds maybe? I don't know, we might be able to read something into these shapes and all this, oh, maybe they're bats? <laughs> but then when we look at the rest of them and go, no, I don't think these were characters. I think these were just shapes. Or maybe I need to talk to the person who drew them so that they can tell me more about why they drew these shapes. And so there you go. Do you need a character to draw a comic? Well, no, we didn't have any characters here. They can just be pictures in this form of getting to see each one of these panels that we put together. All right, let's look at one more. You need frames around your comic. Oh, you know what, I think I think we have time for two more. And you know what, this is starting to get kind of messy over here. So I'm gonna put that one by itself. You need frames. I'm gonna bring the, these ones up here so they're a little bit out of the way. There we go. You need frames around your comic. Well, do you? Well, this is another chance for me to rip some paper. You don't have to, what you could do is you could just draw on a page and see if you could still have your, uh, your comic with, uh, without any frames. But for me, any chance, any chance to rip paper is gonna be something I'm gonna do. So there we go. Same thing over here. And you know what? I am going to make a story this time. So I'm going to make a story for my comic because we already proved that we don't need that, but I'm going to bring it back in because we're trying to explore a different rule now. And so there we go. OK. 
Okay. Just exploring whatever we want to do. You don't have to rip paper if you don't want to. Not everybody likes ripping paper the way that I like to rip paper. There we go. And I'm gonna put some lines up here because I can draw on whatever I make here. There we go. Okay, so I had my um, my tornado here, and then my storm weather up here. That it's the rain is or the weather is so bad that it's raining triangles. The rain coming down here. I drew some mountains down here. I drew a cloud up here, and there we go. There's my comic scene of this bad weather day. And did I need to draw a panel around it? Did I need to draw a frame? No. You know why? Because the paper itself is my frame. There's no need for me to draw something or to have specific um, comic paper. I can just use the page as my scene. I could have folded this in half. I could have drawn a couple of different pictures here in sequence to see if they could still tell a story. And let's do that right now. So we've used the page for this. I'm going to show, remember we're reading the page left to right and then up to down. So I'm going to draw my cloud here and my mountains. There we go. And then I'm going to draw my cloud here and my mountains. Only this time I'm gonna put some dark lines in my cloud. And then over here, same thing. And I'm not being careful. I'm not trying to do the exact same lines every time because um, the idea is still there. You can still tell that there's clouds and there's mountains. These mountains, it's okay when I'm scribbling like this, when I'm exploring, when I'm just trying different things that this, um, you know, this mountain seems to have gotten taller. And this one, this one changes every time. That's okay, they're just mountains. Okay, so this is, the clouds are getting angrier, getting grayer, maybe they're getting a little bit bigger. And now I'm gonna start adding a little bit of rain underneath it. And then one more here. Oh, the cloud got really big. Now it's really angry, the whole thing is gray. You know what? I like that idea. I'm going to bring those lines back over here. There we go. Yeah, I like that. Okay, and then wasn't just squares. Sorry, it wasn't just uh, rain. Now it's like heavy rain with the triangles. There's my mountains again. And then the lines of rain. And then finally, the big storm, such that there was a tornado here, triangles everywhere. Well, you know what? I'm just gonna leave it like that because then I could have those two pages. So this was the sequence of the rain that it went from here to here to here to here. The tornado shows up and <laughs> giant storm. I didn't need any frames around this. And because these were two separate pages, even if this was a folded page, the seam here, the fold in the center would tell me that this went before this one, right? Because remember we read left to right? So we read left to right on a page, up and down, and then we go to the next page. We don't read a book where we read the lines all the way across there. So because that rule 
is already in place, we can find other rules that we can break because we know that certain rules are just going to happen. And so I don't need any lines around this because nobody's gonna read this picture, this picture, this picture, this picture, this picture, this picture, this picture. They're gonna read it like this. And so I don't need frames around my comic. All right, that was another rule that we proved when we're exploring comics. We don't need to follow that. So I'm gonna bring this over here. And I think I have time for one more that we can explore. And this one, you might really enjoy that we're going to break. And what it is, is that in Art Starts Explores, nothing is for keeps. <laughs> and I know that this is a really hard rule for a lot of people, especially um, when, we were, when we were able to gather in the um, Art Starts Gallery, we would have visitors who would, um, who would come to the gallery and they would make something really cool and they'd really struggle to leave it behind because they made something so cool. And we would really encourage them to practice leaving it behind and then go make that cool thing again wherever they were gonna make it and see what was different. But this week, we're gonna break our own rule and we're going to make something that we are going to keep until next week. And the reason we're gonna do that is because we have a really awesome artist, um, Janice, who's going to be in the Art Starts Gallery for uh, Art Starts on Saturday, who's gonna show you how to practice inking. So that's um, adding dimension and weight um, using ink to your comics. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw a comic right now that I've already drawn before, but I don't have it in front of me. So I'm gonna just, from my memory, recreate a comic that I made once upon a time a couple of years ago at Art Starts. And then I'm gonna take that comic, this, this picture with me next week when I watch um, Janice's video along with all of you. And then I can share my results. But then when I'm all done doing that workshop, I'm gonna make a commitment to get rid of that comic again because it's all just practicing and that it isn't for keeps except for this week until next week's workshop. Okay, so the comic that I made a couple of years ago was a comic that I made out of pictures. And so I made some scenes where I was, um, where, and I made a puppet cat and a, and a, a prop window. And, uh, and then I took pictures of myself for uh, each of the panels so I didn't need to draw anything. It was the pictures of the photographs that ended up being my comic book. And so in each panel, I had a window. I'm gonna start by putting that in every panel. And to show that time was moving, I made it so that the sun was here and then it was midday sun, and then it was going to sleep sun, and then it was dark outside. And I think I put a hill. I think that's what I had done as well to kind of show that the sun was setting over there. And then it got dark in this last panel. And then I'm gonna put a window frame over top of that to show that it's a window. If I wanted to, I could draw curtains around it, but I think that's enough. Maybe I'll draw a window frame so that there's just a little bit more dimension around the window. Because I know that I'm gonna be trying out um, inking next week with uh, Janice's workshop, I'm just doing uh, really plain lines. I chose a really skinny uh, marker this time um, and then I'm going to see what I'm going to be able to do um, with Janice next week. If you're drawing something that has a whole bunch of thick lines that's okay. Um, I'm also going to share this drawing with people online so if you want to use my drawing to help you go through the workshop next week you totally can. So so, so something else that was um, that was in every scene was a cat and so I'm going to put a little table down here right in front of the window as my puppet cat in my original drawing sat in the sunshine in every frame 
And what was funny about this, this uh, panel or about this comic was that my cat, there's their tail, their, their fluffy body, and then their head, and then their two, their two ears, and then I'm just gonna go Z, 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 because the cat in my comic slept through the whole day. Z, Z, Z. And it's especially okay that my cat moves just a little bit in each panel because I know the cats stretch and move around a little bit. Last one. Okay. Okay. So all that's really happening so far is that the sun is going and we can show that it's the full day that is passing that the cat is, is going. Then what happened was, oh, I had a chair. In each scene. not going to draw a chair in the last scene and I'll show you why when we draw that last panel. Okay and then there was me and I'm just going to draw myself as a stick person and at that time I think I had a bun and I come up to the cat and I think there's my legs and I bring my hands over to the side and go oh that's so cute that my cat is on is, is sleeping in the sun but then later in the day the cat is still there so then I come up and I'm kind of like what what's going on draw here and then I'm gonna bring my arms around my head like what question mark and then I'm gonna come back even later in the day and the cat is still there and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna offer it some food. Make the, the, the kissy noise. Oh, I need my bun. There we go. Like, come on. You know, cat food is kind of smelly and nothing. And then in the last panel, and this is why I didn't draw my chair, is that I actually just sit down and I join the cat and I go to sleep as well. So I'm gonna have my chair here that I'm sitting on. There we go. And then Z, 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 and my eyes are closed and I'm sleeping as well. And there you go. There's my really fast, my really fast comic that I drew. And I wanna just, just show you that I'm going to be keeping this comic this week until next week's workshop. But to close off this, this workshop, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some time and I'm gonna clean up all the other things that we explored and put it in the recycling bin so that I can keep um, the rule for this week, which is that uh, nothing is supposed to be for keeps. So for breaking the rule with this comic, but for the rest of them, um, I do know why we do that rule and I don't wanna break it all the time. What other rules in comic could you break? This is only a few things that we explored grab some comics and look at them and see if you can make a list of all the different things that you notice that all the comics that you read have in common. And are they things that always have to be there? Can you find comics that consistently break the rules? Check it out, see what you can find. Okay, I'm gonna clean up my space and I look forward to seeing you next week as we join Janice in learning how to ink our comic book scenes. See you soon.